No, I'm not in the South Sea Islands, but Ireland's sunny southeast, which has the highest number of sunshine hours anywhere in Ireland. Declan Bates, a local fisherman from Kilmore Quay, is taking me on a trip to see the hidden jewel in the southeast, the Salty Islands. Some very interesting stories here about birds that were ringed here. There was a gannet ringed here and he was uh, spotted in Israel, in the, the very eastern end of the Mediterranean. Really? And, and there was a shearwater ringed here and he was found in Brazil. A gannet from here was spotted in Israel and another yeah. one was spotted in Brazil uh, from here? A shearwater was ringed here and he was captured in, in Brazil, yeah. This is one of the best locations to see grey seals in northern Europe. Grey seals differ from harbour seals in that they breed in the autumn. I am fortunate to be here to observe the National Wildlife Service census of the grey seals on the island. Hi, Tanya. The whole Salties is, is one, of Ireland's, um, one of Ireland's most important uh, seal pupping sites for, for grey seals, uh, in line with the Inish Keys and the Blaskets and up in Donegal as well. We've just done a survey and we counted all the pups through a season. Um, we got 176 pups and we're repeating that survey at the moment. Well, why the Salty Islands? Why do they choose to pup here? Firstly, we're on an island, so they, they don't have to factor in terrestrial land-based predators on a, on a small island like the Salties. And then they choose these kind of beaches here because they've basically got this three sides of a wall around them for, for sheer protection, so nothing can come at them. You see the largest boulder on the beach? There's a pup moving now. I can see it. And I can see the other one. It's possible there's, there may be some more just on the far right-hand side. We'll have to go around to have a look back in there now. So what's life like for a grey seal here? The adult males, as I say, congregate on, on areas just like you can see over here. The bulls hang around the, the edges of the colony. Um, and they're basically here because the females will be coming into season again. Some of the young males will kind of rehearse uh, kind of pseudo fights here and sort of stretch their limbs and see how good they are and practice the manoeuvres because if they did go into the pupping area where there are females in season, the males that are older and more experienced that are holding kind of firm in that area would see them off. So they need to kind of practice their jousting skills uh, in this area here. So it's kind of a it's kind of a neutral ground um, along here. Tony explained that it is dangerous to disturb a pregnant seal and her pup during the height of the breeding season in October. So I couldn't believe my luck when Tony allowed me to join him as he counted newly born seal pups. Tony, here's a, another one, uh, and there's another one here, another one here. This one is uh, stage one to two. He's about five, six days old. When they're born initially, they're uh, a woolly white color. As they grow older, the white darkens to kind of a more gray, and they fill out. They go from cigar shape to, to barrel shape, really. We'll just clock him in, and we'll move on. Absolutely gorgeous. I've never seen one so close before. The Salty Islands are a special protection area for seabirds. These cliffs are a most spectacular sight and sound in spring and summer when up to 20,000 pairs of guillemots, 2,000 pairs of gannets, kittiwakes, manx shearwaters and puffins take up residence here. The great black-backed gulls with their orange spotted yellow bills look to me like they're the lords of the island. With an incredible two metre wingspan, gannets have binocular vision which help them when they dive for fish. Well, when the gannets leave the nest in the, around this time of the year, or October would be the last time they'll be leaving, they, they, they migrate for four years, the young ones. They don't come back until they're four years old to, to start breeding. And they go down into the Med, west of Spain, and down as far as Senegal in, in Africa. For, and they just to go walk about for four years and come back then when they're, when they're old enough to breed. That's about it. We'll head for home then. Well, thanks for bringing us out. You saw all the seals, you saw everything. Oh, the rest of you seen, I'm yeah. so lucky, I think. I mean, I yeah. can't imagine you get to see more than that. Oh, not really. You saw it all today. Back in the busy fishing port of Kilmore Quay, I met some fishermen with their daily catch. Oh my God, he's so cute. I don't want to eat him. <laughs> oh, hey. My dad used to get these sometimes from Dunleary Pier, the odd time. And, oh, oh, and me, me and my brothers used to make them have races at home on the floor. And we'd be like, oh, we've got to attach them now. We don't want them to go into the pot now. 
I think what's really important about Kilmorky is that it's, it's, it's critical that, that, that it does keep what's good about it and that doesn't get changed and that's very much to do uh, with, with its natural uh, beauty. We would very much be looking to, to attract um, those tourists who have an interest in the natural beauty of, 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 of landscape and I think also um, trying to instill the code of ethics that, uh, that, that, that is part of the Leave No Trace uh, program and, and that is just simply leaving the environment uh, as fresh as you found it. I decided to watch the sunset up the road from Kilmore Quay at Tecumshan Lagoon a key point for spotting migratory birds from Northern Europe. Here I came across a local wildlife artist at work. How are you? Where you are here on any of these lakes along the south coast, right now you're getting all of the, um, the birds moving south. So you get big numbers of duck and so on that actually spend the winter here. Waders, you know, oyster catchers, curlews, all of those. So how do you paint them? I mean, do they stand still for you? So you draw really quickly, so you're looking in a telescope, just doing very, very quick uh, lines and so on. There's actually no shortcut, really. I mean, if some people do like to use photographs and so on. But if you paint from a photograph, all you're getting really is a very stilted, still wooden image. But to try and capture the essence of, and the life of the birds, you know, that's, that's the, the key. So this is, this is a, a, a rough sketch of a, a sleeping mute swan. Do you want to have a go? Okay. Okay. So basically, yeah, just just nice big loose I'm colours. Yeah. No, 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 I don't. You want? You want? Even though I already painted them, that's yeah. cool. This trip to the Wexford coast has been an environmental education to see some of the best natural wildlife and bird habitats in Europe.